Good morning. Uh, so it's good to see you. I think we still left some people in the Buddha bar last night, but uh, it's good to see you here. So um, I'm going to talk about a, f uh, a few things about our strategy and how we look at membership. And uh, um, I adapted a little bit yesterday because of uh, uh, the conversation around advertising and time-based advertising, which we're promoting. So I'm going to talk a bit about that as well. So what's so good about membership? What's the thing that makes membership really great for us? And I'm going to go through four things and a few other points as well, minor points on why that, why that works. So we would, as all of you know, you, you know these stats, you know, we've um, seen print decline, and it's a, it's a real disruption. There's not much, it's not that someone's doing it better than you, the platform is changing, people are not buying newspapers in the same way. So what we had to do was think about our digital growth, and we've flipped our model now, so we're primarily digital. Our, uh, Subscription base is bigger than it's ever been at 700,000. Uh, and digital subs are two thirds of that total. So it's a much more stable commercial model than just relying on, um, just relying on advertising. We, we get more money for our, for our content. We get paid more for our content than we do for advertising. And that's driven a, a step change in how we look at investment and how we look at technology and other things. So uh, as with most people, we've got stats like 50% uh, of people are mobile, but um, the only thing interesting about that stat is it's not very interesting anymore. Everyone's got 50% of people on mobile. So um, obviously it drives subscriptions. But I think when you're looking at data, it's interesting to look at things through different lenses and think about what that actually means. So 50% of traffic on mobile looks a bit like this. And actually, it tells you there's something. It's, it's not that half the people all the time are using mobile. People are using things at different times. The, the pink peaks are um, mobile usage whatever you call mobile these days, whatever is mobile. And uh, the blue is desktop. And you can see there's peaks at uh, commuter times and certain times of day when people are, are particularly focused on mobile. But what's really interesting is what happens at the weekend. So um, if the slide will go, there we go. So um, at the weekend, we get that. We get hardly anyone using desktop. So when you hear you know, these statistics around 50% of people on mobile, and we've, you know, you've got to actually think about what's the profile of what's going on hour by hour, minute by minute on your services, because the profile and the importance of these statistics change how you think about mobile and what it's for and what people are using it for. So one of the most important things around uh, membership was the revelation it brought to the whole business. So John Riddings, our CEO, made this statement. Uh, around how it quickly came to believe that the most important thing about the subscription model was that long-term relationship with the user and how you can use that to drive your strategy, to think about marketing, to think about how you promote content and all the things that come from having that relationship more directly with them. And that's been the foundation of our growth. That's been what's changed since 2007 when we pioneered the metered paywall then uh, everything we've done since then has grown based on this strategy and platform of using data to link in with that membership model. And that's very much what the promise is. You know, once you start using membership for its full potential and you start thinking about data and you start thinking about all the things you can do to, to please your customers more, then you actually start to deliver. Um, so I'm going to play this video. If we could go, do you want to go back a second? At channel four. So I'm just going to play the video. So people often think oh, it's about paywalls and it's about, you know, we don't have a paywall and we can't charge people. So how do we, um, how do we get this sort of relationship? So I'm just going to show you an example from Channel 4 and uh, talk a bit about that. So if you could cue the video, thank you. At Channel 4, we're deeply and passionately in love. We're in love with you, you lovely viewers, and we love making programmes for you. We're so in love, we want to get to know you even better. Because to give you more of your favourite shows and not your mum's or your mate Steve's, it helps to know who you are and what you like. So, if you, you probably, sign up with you Channel 4... You can cut it 4, off there, it's, uh, but I recommend going and watching that. For um, This is how Channel 4 asked people to join their membership. and. These are the results they got. They got 10 million unique registered users, and the second line is even more interesting. They hit a target audience that everyone talks about trying to get to. They hit half of 16 to 24 year old households. And it's because of the way they asked. They just were able to 
uh, frame what they were asking for and what they were asking people to do, and they told you what you were going to get back from that relationship with Channel 4. And people enjoyed that, and they liked the video, and they liked the presentation of it, and so they, they did it. And the, I'll talk a bit more about the bottom point around what you can then do with some of that information so they are able to drive advertising and think about targeting much better as well. So multiple benefits. So don't, don't confuse membership with paywalls. There's a different thing. It's about the relationship with your customers and whichever way you make your, your money or your business model, you can do this. So what else? What comes next after, after you've established your, um, your membership or how do you, when you've, once you've made that relationship? So the first thing you want to do is use it to make your services more valuable. So we, you know, we do things like we look at our user profiles and we look at A-B testing and we do some quite you know, significant things to try and tweak what we do. And there was a lot of talk yesterday in one of the, uh, the AOP uh, publishers session about how to, how to keep following the crowd and butterflying between all the new investments you could make. And some of the things you can do that make a biggest, the biggest difference are just look very closely about what you're currently doing with your current services and make them better. So with, um, we looked at our, uh, this is one example, but we looked at our data and looked at our um, engagement rates around how people went through, our, uh, how our services were used, what, people, what happened when people hit the site, the, the registration barrier and the subscription barriers they saw. And we looked at some statistics. There's some statistics. Uh, and these are, this was the results of running a few campaigns, thinking about how we would take in that data and applying it. So you'll see the graph uh, at the end there goes up massively. And that's the implementation of some tests. That it improved our subscription rate and our registration rate by 100%, the changes we made, just by using some of the data and using some of the information we had about the users and what they wanted and some feedback and different routes to get uh, a better view of what people wanted when they hit the FT, when they arrived and they hit the subs wall, what did they want to see? We were able to massively improve that, that ratio of who came through that. So it's one of the most important things to think about with, is, is around the data and the relationship you have and how you use that. And then you can start to do more advanced things. So um, this is an example of how we do recommended reads. We take two types of information. So we take your, the behavioral information that we know. So we have a relationship with you. We, we care about cookies, but we don't really care about cookies. If you're logged in, we know who you are, and unless it's your mum who's logged in as you, which might happen. But generally, we have a view of who you are. And that allows us to understand more about what you like and what you don't like and what things you would like to see on the site and what you, you know, how you come through the service. Um, and that allows us to optimize it more and personalize it. And we can also then wrap that up with contextual. So contextual is looking at a piece of content and seeing what other content is similar to that that you might be interested in. Or sometimes it's about finding things that are not similar. Um, it might be about authors. It might be about following particular authors that you like. So you can. Once you start using the information you have, you can do some very smart things with recommending what else you want people to do and what else you want to offer them. So that's one angle. So talk about advertising. So one of the things of making advertising more valuable is you can use the same model. So we use um, these are whole, whole topics for another presentation, but we use a lot of semantic technologies and uh, technologies that look at relevance. And um, the, uh, while we're still talking about click throughs so this type of approach has a tenfold increase in, in click-throughs and is very successful in being able to match advertising to the content and match it to the user. So again, we're using behavioral information and contextual information to put something on that page that's maybe advertising they might actually want to read, might actually want to see. And that's been incredibly successful. And you know, when there are different ways of placing this, which have uh, also been quite interesting to see, which not necessarily uh, it's not necessarily about putting things above the fold anymore, and it possibly never was, actually. But the thing that is interesting is how, how you integrate that advertising and how slickly you can do it and how you can make it a valuable thing is, uh, is one of the most important things you can do. So that's one angle. But then I'm going to talk a bit about time, because it was mentioned yesterday. So this is the graph. This is attention time on the internet. This is what you're fighting against. We're all in those little slips at the, at the top there, around sort of news and entertainment and so on. Uh, I think entertainment's somewhere in the other section, but, but you basically, that's what you're, that's your position on the internet, that's what you're fighting for. So already you are a small piece of a, of a very much bigger puzzle. 
And you've got to figure out um, how, how you play in a volume game. So you know, click-throughs and CPMs are all about volume of, volume of stuff. So we looked at it differently and said, we, you know, we don't care about volume. We care about quality. So we care about what's the, what's the quality of the advertising you're serving. And through that, and through the membership and the things we've done, we've made our advertising more valuable, which means it's worth more, which means people pay more for it because it's more targeted and it's more relevant. Um, and to give you an example of what, this, you know, what it means with click-throughs, uh, so this is uh, John Slade. This has uh, stolen a couple of his slides. And he, um, he's now our marketing director. He used to be our global commercial director. And uh, his point was that you're more likely to have twins than to click on a, an advert and go through to whatever it is behind it. And John would know because they are his twins. So there you go. Um, so it, it's really about time. It's about thinking about what the, um, what, we, no, what do people want? So we asked, we did some research. These are some interesting replies people gave about how much they trusted and valued advertising and the relevance of it. And, um, a uh, slight reference to fraud and the issues that come from that as well, which was talked about extensively yesterday. But who gets paid and who, who's, you know, who's, uh, who's the master in terms of this relationship? Why, why are you serving this advertising? What's the value to the end user? We tend to think about what's the value to the advertiser. What's the value to the end user of this advertising? And if you start thinking about, thinking about things that way, then you become able to deliver better advertising. Um, you also have to bear in mind that as well as all the fraud, there's also half the ads in existence are never seen anyway. So of the three trillion ads a day or however, whatever ridiculous number it is, um, you can already discount half of them. And as over time, advertisers are getting more and more aware that a lot of their stuff is just disappearing into a black hole. So the question came around what is it that advertisers want? And they, well, they have become more interested in attention metrics. Um, so what we're asking advertisers for is, do you want that, which is, I'll play it again because it's, uh, this is the standard you have to comply to to meet the, the basic requirements of the, the IAB. Now watch carefully because it goes really quickly. So it's half, half the ad for a second, that's it. That's, that, uh, that will get me paid by my advertiser. Now, there's a few things missing from that ad because you can't even see half the advert anyway. But if I, you know, if I look at it, that's all I have to do to get paid. And obviously, as an advertiser, this is not necessarily a good outcome. That's not necessarily what you want. So we looked at our, again, looking at our data, looking at our audiences, looking at our membership and the, the ability that's given us to see what people do. Um, we figured out that we could, we could do better than that. So this is what we consider. So if you buy a, a cost per hour campaign from us, this is what you're guaranteed to see as an impression. which is five seconds for the full ad. And obviously, as an advertiser, you would rather buy that. That's much more valuable. Some of you might even have registered what that ad was actually for. So it's, um, it's a huge difference in terms of what we're selling. It's a big difference in terms of what the value is to the advertiser. Now, I was having some interesting discussions yesterday about just coming up with a great idea like this is not as simple as making it happen when you've got a whole industry that's run on spreadsheets of CPMs and CTRs and you know, the whole mechanics of the industry have to change and adapt. So even though everyone thinks it's a great idea, it's not as simple as that. So there's a lot of other issues with it, but that's what we've been driving through and trying to, trying to help push the industry towards this. The best thing for you as a publisher is you can carry on doing your CPMs, but you can offer this as a premium product, which has real value and allows you to target and uh, raise the value of your advertising. And you can come back with interesting statistics, and you can target this. You can talk about that. This is a, we worked with Chartbeat a lot on our um, our implementation of cost per hour. And uh, you, can see the, you can see there the number of hours, and you start using a different language and talking about the value of that. So it's high-value advertising, and the membership wall helps with that. There's less fewer bots. It's more focused and targeted. So it's all good. Um, you also need to make your platforms more valuable. So people tend to, when we've been looking at how we develop and what we want to do, uh, people tend to spend a lot of time up here looking at products and looking about which product we're going to build and how we're going to build it and what's it going to look like. Um, Sort of important, but you'll notice in there there's lots of products that are uh, not your product. So um, people spend a lot of time talking about responsive and building their website. Um, 
in the future, you might just be at the mercy of Facebook and you're, that's where your content might be. So you know, the interesting thing about media companies is, is trying not to be surprised again. So I've um, been quoted as saying you know, the, that uh, mobile first is an overrated term and that's not that I don't think being mobile first is a bad thing to do, but it's actually, it's important to think beyond that because there's more coming. So you're not moving from a stable state of desktop to a stable state of mobile. You've got to think about what's next or else you'll just get to, the, you'll get to mobile and everyone will be using wearables and Snapchat and you've got to figure out all over again how you're going to get your stuff into those models. So the important thing to think about is being API first. These are the three pillars we have. So our membership, uh, universal publishing is our strategy for how we want to be everywhere, how we want to get our content to all the places we want it to get to, to, get it to and obviously our data. And the, the API in the middle, the, the ability to syndicate content to all of those products and platforms is our key thing. Um, and you have to think about how you're investing. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies, have, you know, have difficulty understanding what, what should I build as a platform and what should I not build as a platform. So if you, if you look at a graph, and so these are you know, building features on one side and platform investment on the other, if you're doing this and you're just building lots of features, you are going to be in trouble. You're going to have a lot of technical debt. And it's very hard to move forward when you spend half your budget just keeping the lights on. And if you do this, then you haven't delivered any value. So if you spend too much time on the platform, you're also screwed. Um, so you have to find a way to keep in this happy curve where you're able to prototype things quickly, do stuff quickly, and then figure out how that's then going to contribute back to your future and your platform investment. So this is like a, a key thing which I talk about a lot and try and get people in the business to understand what's the most important thing to do here. Um, whatever you're doing, you're not investing enough in your platforms. You know, the platform is the thing that will help you into the future. And when you think about devices, so those who use this slide, and I was talking about different devices that might come along. This is the iPhone strapped to your face platform, which at some point in the future might become big, and I used to joke about it. And then someone went and invented this, which is, the, uh, which is a, a, a VR device. So oh, I, I got it wrong. It wasn't the iPhone strapped to your face. It was the iPad strapped to your face. But you, know, you, you never know where these things are going. Right? And the HoloLens and other stuff, is, is all, they're all interesting platforms to play with. So you've got to keep thinking ahead. Um, so all of that is designed to make your content more valuable and more, you know, our key view of how our audiences are engaged is all driven by the things I've talked about, the various different elements that contribute to making your content more engaging and more people using it for more time, which allows you to do all the other things to monetize it. So that's basically, uh, that's basically me, all of these things designed to make you happy and uh, if there's any questions, we've got a few minutes left, so thank you.